Coming to DARPA is like grabbing the nose cone of a rocket and holding on for dear life. DARPA is a place where if you don't invent the internet, you only get a B. A DARPA program manager quite literally invents tomorrow. Coming to work every day and being humbled by that. DARPA is not one person or one place. It's a collection of people that are excited about moving technology forward. Hello, and welcome to Voices from DARPA. I'm your host, Tom Shortrich. You know what? Let's skip the context and just dive in. Differential privacy prevent misleading or malicious uses of it. Reducing the power consumption from the backend processing. Solid state cooling that is extremely compact and efficient and can actually allow us to get down to cryogenic temperature. The next generation of piezoelectric nanomaterials. A new mathematical theory to solve the Navier-Stokes equations in one minute on a laptop computer. Wireless power transfer, network of unmanned aircraft system using electromechanical beamforming. Where can you get that diverse a set of ideas? Well, at DARPA, obviously, but more specifically at the annual YFA PI meeting. YFA, that's DARPA's Young Faculty Award Program, and PI stands for Principal Investigator. Let me just throw one more acronym at you that you'll hear a lot of this episode, and that's PM, Program Manager. Here's Dr. Rohith Chandrasekhar, the DARPA Program Manager currently in charge of the YFA program, with a brief history lesson. So YFA was started in 2006. YFA was put together because the traditional DARPA program solicitations were rather large challenges that required significant teaming that perhaps single PIs would not be able to address. YFA was put together as a way of putting smaller topics that could bring in young investigators much earlier in their tenure and provide them mentorship such that they would be equipped to start building teams that could address larger programs in the future. YFA's goal is the same as when it began, to identify and engage young investigators in junior research positions and to provide them with high-impact funding to address DARPA and DOD challenges at large. Now, the ultimate goal of YFA is to get YFA PIs to become PIs on full DARPA programs in the future and perhaps even serve as a program manager at DARPA. In the opening montage of this episode, we heard a sampling of current YFA awardees describing their research topics. Now, in the interest of time, we can't go into the details of all of those, but there is more information on awardees and their research topics available on the YFA page on DARPA.mil. We'll have that link in the show notes. In addition, throughout this episode, we'll also be hearing from two current DARPA program managers, Dr. Chris Bettinger of the Biological Technologies Office and Dr. Sunil Bahawe of the Defense Sciences Office, who were both former awardees of the DARPA YFA program, to get their perspectives. One thing about YFA, it's not an award in the sense of a prize for work already completed. YFA is first and foremost a mentorship program. And so the topics that you see in the solicitations are developed by PMs at the agency who then serve as PM mentors for selected YFA PIs. These PMs work with PIs over the two-year period to provide them with guidance and contacts in order to maximize the impact of their work and to help with their overall career development. The YFA base period is a two-year period that's funded up to $500,000. That's about $250,000 a year. After the base period, there is an option to be nominated for a director's award nomination, and that's a year three effort. And the things that are taken into consideration are certainly technical accomplishments and relevance to the DARPA mission, the ability to, again, navigate these challenges while still ensuring that technical and expenditure goals are met on time, and the ability to really communicate the impact of this work to a broad audience are all taken into consideration with regards to Director's Award nominations, as well as selection for awards. Here's Dr. Chris Bettinger, who I mentioned earlier as one of the two current DARPA program managers who previously went through the YFA program. The way I think about it, you know, as a faculty member is dollars per page of proposal written, right? So in terms of that metric, the YFA program is pretty much unbeatable. So that's the first thing. It's a really good opportunity, just even if as a faculty member or a researcher. But I think the the unforeseen advantage and insight I got as a, as a YFA was really insight into the mission and how much the mission just drives everything that we do. The output from our work is often technology that we're delivering to our end users. That's an important and unique feature of these kind of programs, right? I think being open-minded to that as a metric for success is not always a paper, but it could be something else. I think that kind of broad thinking is important when, when engaging in any DARPA project, but especially the YFA. If you're interested in applying for the YFA program, you're probably wondering about eligibility requirements. 
So in order to be a YFA, you have to be employed at a US institution. You need to be either a tenure track professor or within three years of receiving tenure, or you need to be an associate professor. We also accept applications from folks at nonprofit institutions, and those individuals need to be within 12 years of receiving their PhD. Now, one thing I needed to clarify was when they say young faculty, that's not an age restriction. Now, there are many folks who may have a career external to academia and then come into academia after that. And they are still considered young faculty members because they are now taking on the challenge that ideally would be focused on fundamental research that can address challenges of national security and impact that the DOD is interested in. And so they are still considered young faculty and are fully eligible to apply to the Young Faculty Award program. One of the unique things about the DARPA YFA program is that we do not have a requirement on citizenship or permanent residence within the U.S. And that allows us to engage with faculty who are much younger in their tenure so that we can get them to start thinking about how their research and expertise could be used to address problems of national security. That was a critical element for Dr. Sunil Bahawe. So when I started as a assistant professor at Cornell University, one of the first things that your mentors will tell you is to apply to all the young faculty awards. Not only are they prestigious line items that you add to your tenure portfolio, but they provide significant amount of open-ended research funding. And you are not competing with all the famous tenured established professors who might be in your field. So your probability of getting selected for funding is higher. Unbelievably, DARPA at that time had announced the YFA program. And so I was quite thrilled to receive it. Let's say you're eligible and interested in applying for YFA. What exactly does that process look like? YFA is unique within the agency because it is the only program that actually has a blind abstract review process. So the first step to submitting to YFA is an executive summary that's a one-pager that is entirely blind. Any information about your institution, any bibliography, any references are all stripped away in order to ensure that the ideas that we're soliciting are truly top-notch, regardless of where they come from. Those executive summaries are due somewhere around six weeks after the solicitation is put out. And then at that point, you receive either a thumbs up or a thumbs down with regards to your executive summary. And then full proposals are due about two months after that. As always, with any DARPA solicitation, getting a thumbs down does not mean you cannot submit a full proposal. And you're not required to submit an executive summary either. But it is great to submit one to at least get an initial check as to whether your idea meets the requirements of that topic within the solicitation. Since its inception in 2006, the YFA program has funded well over 500 principal investigators to tackle those research topics, which come out in a yearly solicitation, usually in the late October timeframe. You can find those at sam.gov and grants.gov, and we'll have the link to this year's research announcement in the show notes as well. In each year's YFA research solicitation, there are usually about 25 to 30 different research topics, which can come from program managers all across the agency. Each of these topics has a broad description of the challenge that we're trying to address, what the current state of the art is or what the solutions that exist are, and perhaps some insights that we've seen in the literature that point towards a solution that could address this with some fundamental research investment that could be made over a two-year period with a YFA PI. Topics usually also indicate what a successful proposal would need to identify and successfully demonstrate in year one and year two of those efforts. In many cases, when PMs put these topics together, They've identified this topic as a white space within the portfolio of programs that they manage. For example, where they're looking at large problems that are integration challenges, there may be small nuggets there that are inherently fundamental science problems that need to be addressed. Those are great opportunities for YFA PIs to actually get plugged into larger programs within the agency, understand how their work can impact a clear national security challenge, and perhaps even identify potential funding opportunities where their work can now be funded to address some of those challenges more specifically. So that way they can connect with others that work perhaps in the same area or even in a slightly different technical area than them, but find these cross-pollinations that could lead to successful funding for newer ideas that could address DARPA challenges in the future. Here are Sunil and Chris again to talk about their YFA research topics. So when I submitted, for example, a YFA proposal, I didn't want to just say, I want to explore interdomain coupling just for the sake of it. I wanted to explore it to solve a pertinent DOD problem 
in my particular case, it was for designing what was in those days known as optoelectronic oscillators. They're essentially oscillators that have a very long delay line in order to enhance their short-term stability. What I proposed in my YFA program was to replace that delay line, which is an optical delay line, which was a very long fiber, with a mechanical resonator, which essentially involves slowing down the speed of the information. Therefore, because you slowed it down, you can sort of accommodate it in a much smaller size scale. By doing that, we were able to make a compact oscillator, and that's what we demonstrated in the YFA program. The project was loosely related to this program called Electrics, and so the broad goal of the program was really thinking about devices that could stimulate the nervous system in interesting ways to evoke therapeutic responses. And so my part of that project was really thinking about new materials that we could develop to sort of help those devices integrate with those tissues. The real sort of technical crux is if you think about your cell phone or your laptop, those are electronics that are hard, brittle, planar in nature, and think about the tissues that we're trying to interface with, like neurons, those are soft, wet, and squishy. And so we were making breakthroughs in material science to be able to sort of better harmonize those sort of rigid, dry devices on the silicon-based electronics with the soft, wet tissue of the nervous system. And so that was a really exciting opportunity to, to try to bring to bear some of my expertise in material science and create new solutions to sort of solve this sort of mission-critical problem. And I think that program and that experience more broadly was exciting because it showcased the creativity and the impact of a DARPA program. And then after that, I was hooked. I really was excited about the thought process and the ability to connect two seemingly disparate fields of research and unite them and to have some really interesting products come out of that process. And so that was really, I think, the, the catalyst to becoming a DARPA program manager. And program managers get just as much out of the YFA program as the awardees do. It's been a truly enriching experience because you get to interact with so many folks at different walks of life who are really engaged in identifying how fundamental research can impact DARPA challenges. And so it gives me the opportunity to interact with nearly 50 program managers across the agency, a large number of contracting officer representatives, and a, a, a large base of young faculty awardees that have come and gone but also engage with those newer universities that are still yet to come into the DARPA fold and help address DARPA challenges. I think there are a lot of different motivations for the YFA program, but I think perhaps the primary goal is mutual awareness. I think it's a great opportunity for early stage researchers, faculty members, et cetera, to get to learn about how DARPA works and just really the mission and what it's like to work in this unique environment. And so on the flip side, I think program managers get a chance to meet the next generation of talented scientists and engineers. And to wrap this all up, final thoughts from Chris and Sunil. Being a YFA was a transformative experience. It's really exciting to be able to get some insight into how DARPA works. And what was really exciting to me is the mission. I think that really differentiates DARPA from many other federal agencies. And the YFA topic gives you a chance to understand and appreciate the, the mission of the DOD. I mean... Everybody should be applying to the YFA. This is not an option. If I were a department head and any of the assistant professors in my department were not submitting the YFA, I would go crazy on them. It is an incredible opportunity. Everybody who has eligibility for it should and must abandon everything else in their life and make sure they do not miss the YFA deadline. This is not an option. I think we can leave it at that. The 2024 Young Faculty Awards research announcement is now open with topics ranging from microphysiological systems, artificial intelligence, large language models, power generation, energetics development, underwater propulsion, space technology, quantum information science, and electromagnetic interference, to name just a few. There's also an open topic for technical thrust areas from the Defense Sciences Office, looking at novel materials and structures, sensing and measurement, computation and processing, enabling operations, collective intelligence, and emerging threats. For eligibility information, full listing and description of topic areas, submission process details, and deadlines for executive summaries and proposals, visit the 2024 YFA research announcement at sam.gov or grants.gov. We'll have all those links and more in the show notes. Thanks for listening.